Hello everyone and welcome to my bold and beautiful Today Update channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Fashion Show Winner Revealed Brooks Discovery The bold and the beautiful spoilers for the coming two weeks, October 23 to November 3, reveal that there will be some emotional moments as Eric Forrester's plot takes another ruinous turn. During the week of October 23 to 27, Dr. Colin Colby will reveal Eric's rearmost test results and offer updates on a delicate opinion. That'll leave Donna Logan in gashes as she processes the news with Eric. Katie Logan will ultimately eavesdrop too important, so Donna and Eric will come clean once they are brazened. Although Katie will promise not to tell anyone about Eric's medical condition, she'll latterly push Donna to confess to the Foresters. Meanwhile, R.J. Forrester will have an indeed harder time keeping Eric's secret under wraps. There will be a tight spot that leads to R.J. nearly dishing to Ridge Forrester, but he'll honor the oath he made to Eric in the end. Still, R.J.'s in for a heartbreaking shock when Eric makes an admission laterally. It sounds like Eric will fill R.J. in on his exact opinion, so R.J. will tear up over how bad the situation is. Over with Brooke Logan, she'll push Carter Walton to clarify which Forrester he's lodging for when it comes to the competition. Carter considers both Eric and Ridge to be good musketeers of his, so he may struggle to pick a firm side. Maybe Carter will argue that he's simply teen Forrester creations and hoping for whatever outgrowth can bring them the most success. Ridge will formally again declare that he's going to crop victorious but Eric will be inversely convinced that he's going to come out on top and make this final collection his heritage. There will be some superstars at the fashion show, including Countess von Frankfurt, Fanny Grayson, Lauren Fenmore Baldwin, and Esther Valentine. Of course, Lauren and Esther's scenes will be part of fun crossover event with the young and the restless, so look for Lauren to make a big purchase for Fenmore's while Esther gets the Forrester original she's been featuring of. Katie will be in charge of explaining the competition rules once it's time for the models to strut the runway. The crowd will surely be agitated to see Ridge and Eric's hottest looks hit the stage. Despite the competitive nature that Ridge and Eric share, they'll manage to reconnect a bit right before the fashion sweepstakes. During the week of October 30, November 3, the Coucher competition will toast up and eventually conclude with a big winner. Will it be Eric's collection that pulls ahead or will Ridge achieve palm rather? Either way, Eric's failing health could bring trouble after the event wraps up. Brooke is set to make a stunning discovery, so that could tie in with Eric's worsening health extremity and possible collapse. Eventually, Steffi Forrester will come home and give John, Finn Finnegan the surprise reunion he's been staying for. There will be a lot to talk about since Sheila Carter is now romantically involved with Deacon Sharp, but at least Steffi will be home to bandy effects with Finn in person. Unfortunately, Liam Spencer is determined to win Steffi back and will inescapably beget more issues in her marriage to Finn. The bold and the beautiful spoilers say some love triangle drama could be brewing, so stay tuned for all the twists and turns. Finn calls Liam on his scumbag move. In the bold and the beautiful recap for October 20, 2023, Finn told Liam each about himself. Not one teradiddle was told and none of it was complimentary. In addition, Thomas promised to be there for Hope's what-ifs, and Sheila refused to lower herself to Lai's position. Now let's dig a little deeper into what exactly happened. Thomas was surprised by Liam's unforeseen appearance in the design office, more so by his ranting and raving against Finn, and indeed more so by his pointed statement of wanting Steffi back in Los Angeles. Now, Thomas could agree with Liam on one point. Yes, Finn has made miscalculations as far as Sheila is concerned. Still, Finn is still Steffi's hubby, a hubby that she loves veritably, veritably much. And as for Liam's huffing that he could cover Steffi better than Finn and that Finn wasn't acting like a real hubby? Who was it that ran down from his marriage the minute effects got tough? Liam, that's who. Hardly chastened, Liam made a beeline for Finn's office slightly missing Ridge, who'd come to find out whether or not Finn had told Steffi about Sheila and Deacon. No, no, he'd not. Liam took great exception to literacy of that fact himself. What was Finn allowing? Also, what did Finn intend to do about the whole situation? 
Finn took offense to Liam's offense and took his rival to task for questioning his love and commitment to Steffi given all the times he spent waffling between Steffi and Hope. I know what you were doing, advised Finn, who continued, it's discourteous to me, and it's discourteous to Steffi. It's a scumbag move, stay out of my business, and stay the hell down from my woman. But did Liam here corrupt the study? Rather, he called Steffi over and left her a most intriguing voicemail, one that ratted out Deacon and Sheila's affair, how her hubby was keeping it from her, and concluded with him complaining that Finn would no way be suitable to cover her the way that he can. We were married formerly, we can do it again, Liam creepily explained to the print of his partner after hanging up. Zero self, respect having tried and failed to move Deacon that his attempts to rehabilitate Sheila were futile. Hope returned to Forrester Creations and Thomas's comforting grass. Try as she might, she still couldn't return Thomas's affirmations of love. In fact, she might no way be suitable to do so. After Liam, she might not ever be suitable to connect with another man on that intimate position. But Thomas didn't care. He'd be there for her. Always. How comforting despite eyeing a set of shanks. Perfect for pecking, Sheila kept her cool. No way she was going to lose it and do commodity gathering that would land her back in captivity. She's not stupid. All effects that Lai didn't want to hear. Oh well, there's always hereafter. Playing with fire, Lee taunts Sheila, hoping she'll lash out. The bold and the beautiful spoilers and updates tease Lee Finnegan is playing with fire. She taunts Sheila Carter, hoping she'll lash out. Lai is so hopeless to prove Sheila has not changed that she tries to provoke her into proving it in public at Il Giardino. Lee Finnegan is not just hopeless but driven. Lai isn't just hopeless, she's driven for someone who Sheila ran off a pier to her presumed death not all that long ago. She's taking a big threat provoking her. She actually has no business snooping, but when she finds Sheila tending bar after hoping she's induced her son, John Finn Finnegan, to liberate from her, it's too much. Lai hates Sheila with the fire of a thousand suns, and after nearly losing her life to her, it's indeed more violent. Lee Noe understood why Finn saw any humanity at each in Sheila to her, as to utmost of the Spencers, Foresters, and Logans, she's not a mortal, she's a monster. As far as Sheila having saved anyone's life, vibeless at Kelly Spencer, Finn turned down from his phone call long enough to help a hijacking or murder. Prove me wrong Lee's taunts are a dare to Deacon Shark to prove her wrong about Sheila. Indeed though Sheila did finish saving Finn's life when Lai had him in a secret place. Lai will no way admit that happed and will claim it no way happed and Finn doesn't flashback Sheila shocking his heart. He only remembers his despair to find Steffi Forrester Finnegan. He only learned about what happened after Sheila accidentally shot him after he recovered, and that Steffi, too had been shot and left for dead cleric was the bone, who set up them. As far as Lai is concerned, the only way to prove to the world Sheila has not changed is to provoke her, taking her own life into her hands again. Sheila Carter holds her own indeed, though it's delicate for Sheila not to break a bottle over Lai's head, shutting up her sardonic and spiteful mouth, Sheila focuses on herself and Deacon and their love. She holds her own against Lai and simply ignores her, considering calling their bouncer to have the whizzing snake of a woman removed, but rather doesn't engage. Sheila decides with Lai, the stylish offense is no defense of herself at each, just let her draw negative attention to herself and let the other guests complain about her. There's nothing further that Lai dare do to get under Sheila's skin, if she does continue pushing her buttons it'll be Lai who makes herself a public nuisance. Eventually Lai is given the ultimate personality, and she brought it on herself. She's attended out of the eatery, the other guests assuming she's had too important to drink. Thanks for watching if you liked this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.